Hello, 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 hello. Welcome to a brand new episode of Love Archkal. I'm Ankit, back in Bengaluru. And I'm Asta, and I'm still in Bombay. Hi. Asta, you're glowing. What's your beauty? Ah, now, now, I'm high. My, my beauty, 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 beauty. 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 Always wear sunscreen. To, I won't. Remember kids, yes. always wear yes. sunscreen. Okay, Especially so Love Ajkal is... Especially 30 and above. <laughs> Absolutely. Love Ajkal is uh, India's favorite podcast about all things dating, love, relationships, and the entire spectrum of this incredibly deep human emotion. And uh, this also is a video uh, in case you guys want to watch. So I'm uploading this on... Ankit Vengurlekar, my YouTube channel. So feel free to go check it over there in case you want to see Asta Ki Khub Surti, Jo Mein Keh Raha Tha. Um, and uh, we have a very special guest on today's episode. Uh, you'll see her very, very shortly. Was that Kishore who just popped behind you? <laughs> that is cute. Did he? Okay, I didn't see that. Okay, I didn't see that. Otherwise, I would have been like, what, what are you doing? <laughs> Remember that BBC clip? <laughs> <laughs> where this yeah. guy is giving a formal interview about North Korea and his daughter and wife are like, oh my god, oh my god. Anyway, the child uh, like so, this. Bilkul, today's episode, hai, uh, it actually comes from a bunch of uh, listener queries and messages that we've been getting. Asa, you want to talk about uh, what the episode is about? I'm really hyping it up and building it up. <laughs> no, I think so. So a lot of uh, teenagers write to us and Ankit and I are always amazed at uh, the, uh, the intensity of their questions, the intensity of their relationships or their issues, because we look back and when we were like 13, 14, 15 our problems were that we can go out and play in the evening or not. Or we can drink or not. Or in class, when we had zero exams, how do we sign the uh, report card? Ko. These were our problems. Like, this was like the extent of our problems at 13, 14, 15. But these days, um, kids are obviously, uh, you know, much more grown up at 13, 14, 15. They're on social media. Uh, they have been exposed to I think many ideas and concepts which we were exposed to much later on in life. So right. ob obviously, if you're exposed to adult concepts and adult uh, conversations, then it might muddle up your head when you're younger, right? So they have all these issues. And we've been getting lots and lots of messages about um, failed relationships at 15. I'm like, what's uh, relationship with your chocolate? You should only have a relationship with your like uh, books or something at that time. And uh, so we get a lot of questions about failed relationships. We get a lot of questions about insecurities uh, with their bodies or, um, you know, uh, with their friends. Uh, we also get a lot of questions about people who have issues with their parents at this age. And they're wondering, and during lockdown, of course, those uh, issues have been, uh, you know, heightened. So we thought that it'd be nice to talk to someone and she's just logged on. We It'll be nice to uh, talk to someone who has more uh, hands-on experience with this, who's written a book about it as well. Uh, so I'm going to get Jyotsna Mohan. Ankit, will you tell, uh, tell us a little bit about the book? I mean, what's the book Absolutely. Called? In fact, before uh, we talk about the book, I think it's important to talk about Jyotsna herself. That helps establish context and credibility. Uh, Jyotsna, as you will see uh, on video, is a very familiar looking face. And that's because she has been a news anchor and journalist on NDTV for a very long time. And uh, so that's where her face is familiar from. And uh, so obviously she brings the rigor of a journalist uh, into her book. It's so good to have you on Love Ajkal podcast, Jyotsna. Thank you so much for making time, especially on a Sunday. I know it can be super hectic with the family, etc., given the circumstances. No, thank you for having me, Ankit and Astha. Really looking forward to this today. It's a good way to spend my Sunday, no problem. That's great. Firstly, congratulations on Stone Shame Depressed an explosive account of uh, the secret lives of Indian teenagers. Uh, this book came out, what, a couple of months ago in the middle of a lockdown? Yeah, it did, September. It, it came, I mean, it's not the ideal way to get a book out, you know. And uh, I was really hoping to have it out in better circumstances, but it is what it is. And, you know, the publishers didn't really want to push it anymore. So 
September, yes. <laughs> came out in actually, September. Said, actually, it's better but because people are sitting at home and they can yeah, we have and have time. conversations about this. And we have more time to I read know. now. I mean, most people use uh, their daily lives as a excuse not to read. Oh, I came home and it was too That's late true. and things like that. That's now true. you have time That's to read. That's true. <laughs> I did. Yeah. I did. I did up my reading. Yes, in the last few months. But you know, I think uh, the fact is <laughs> to sell sell books via social media. Like an, a friend of mine, also an author, he told me. He said, you know, um, selling it over social media. You know, don't go by what anybody says <laughs> because everybody says, oh, we're buying it. We're buying it. Nobody's really, you know, keeping their words. So I, I mean, I take it with a pinch of salt. But I don't have an option. It is only, uh, you know, it is only this. <laughs> medium for me there is no physical medium right now so i'll take what yeah you know whatever i get and hope you know that people are reading and word of mouth i hope you know that that's helping me actually a lot no in fact you should know this yeah. personal last week last week on love archkal podcast uh, and that's literally how uh, asa and i we were like we have to get jots now on because we had a listener query so we have very active listener engagement they send us queries on our instagram and email and uh, a teenager actually wrote to uh, us about uh, her relationship problem and uh, i have purchased your book uh, i'm yet to finish reading it but i purchased your book and so that's when i recommended the book on the podcast and i was like oh my god we totally need to get jots on because what's better than to hear it from the author's mouth uh, about the process about the learnings and the insights so for the sake of this conversation two things number one if you can just give a quick you know uh, sort of prompt context uh, about the comprehensive uh, con- uh, concept of the book and then for the sake of this conversation because it's love archkal um let's try and focus our talk today on the secret romantic lives of teenagers the intersection with internet and social media and how online life is impacting along with you know peers etc their individual offline personal life all right so um the book i have the book here the yeah. book <laughs> I have to do Everyone this please go buy it. It's a brilliant read. <laughs> yeah, I bought it. I I bought it last night so I've been reading it since oh, morning. Oh, amazing. Because otherwise my, you know, my very friendly millennial PR friend gets really upset that you know, he forget <laughs> <laughs> to do the work and I have to do it. So anyway, so um, yeah, the, the I think there were a couple of reasons why I actually got down to, you know, getting this book out or starting from the fact that i think the last 2 3 years i'd already been writing so i write i write quite extensively um so i was writing uh, you know a little bit i started picking up on kids issues i think started with the fact that my own daughter got bullied in school and uh, physical bullying and she's tiny so that you know whole body shaming and uh, you know and girls can be really nasty that's something i learned huh? D- during the book writing the book that uh, the mean girls concept as i call it it's huge anyway so i think i started with that and i started realizing that there's a lot happening around children and uh, by children i mean you know going actually into the early 20s and as you know simultaneously i was really i've got two kids uh, my elder one just turned 12 the younger one is 8 but even when my elder one was younger i was i was really fascinated with you know all these kids who got like a smartphone at the age of 5 6 or you know they gifted ipads or they have four, or they have tvs in their rooms you know and i try to you know get into that and i'm like really fascinated as to why is it that, where is it actually taking these kids and where is it taking their parents you know in a sense to give them these gadgets so early and then once i started writing these articles i, I tried to connect the dots in a way to see you know whether these very kids are then turning out to be the snapchat bullying kids or whether you know these are the ones in the boys locker room is there a link between kids and gadgets to early and the headlines and then of course you realize that you know they make the headlines they make it for 24 hours they make it for 48 hours and then you know the boys locker room it's completely off everybody's memory but it's not like it's gone away it it if you speak to all these kids the teens they tell you this is happening in such a big way and so the attempt was also then to talk about kids issues because in my opinion these are really big issues that you know in a social media environment they've they've really exaggerated to an extent where we need to take uh, you know we need to we need to focus on them and yet we as a society continue to dismiss these things because you know bachon ko kya problem hai we give them everything you know they have everything they have the toys they have their studies the nothing nothing bothers nothing should ideally bother them as per our society but lots is 
And I think that was the attempt to bring out the fact that there's lots going around children just because they're children doesn't mean that, you know, these issues are small. And to, you know, kind of take notice that mental health is very big in this generation. Mental health, you know, drugs, everything is happening. And if we're not going to accept that these things happen, you know, we're going to eventually lose a generation. So, yeah, you know, that's the attempt to, I think that that was a space that no one had actually touched because like I said, you know, we don't take what happens with our children too seriously. So that, that was the intent of uh, bringing this out. And uh, talking about, uh, you know, the digital space and their internet, online, offline lives. I mean, I'm, I've, I've been really fascinated. I've learned so much Asta and Ankit during this journey, you know. It's been a revelation for me also because I think the thing that really st stood out for me is that I, when I started writing it, I, I, I was imagining talking about 16, 17, 18 year olds going into 21, 22. But where I ended was... Uh, you know, as I call it, battleground 10, 11, 12. And, and that is huge, you know, when you're talking about anorexia and 10 year olds, and you're talking about uh, 13 year olds who are blackmailed into having sex, it's, it's a different ball game. And I think that that just shook me. And, and there were okay, days okay, pause, was... pause, 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 you, you, you're dropping some really loaded statements here. And of course, like, I understand you've lived with the book and the insights and concepts for longer. So maybe these are not big statements for you, but that just hit me like a vehicle would hit me at 100 kilometers per hour. Uh, let's take it slow. Let's take it one by one, okay? Uh, I understand you are calling these children, but for context, uh, also so, you know, the audience of Love yes. Article understands yes, this. Yes. Uh, these are young adults. These are, yes. uh, you know, people in the age group between 12 and 20. Uh, these could be pre-pubescent, uh, so that's about 12, 13, 14, or these could be post-pubescent after their puberty, right, Jyotsa? I, actually, I'd say I, I, a lot of incidents that I've reported are eight-year-olds, nine-year-olds. So I, I, I would oh say that the tweens, Ankit and Astha, the tweens are the new pre teens in a way. Twenties. You know? okay, and so, for context, yeah, Jyotsa, yeah. so Jyotsa, for context, the, 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 the kids or the young adults, the tweens that you have interviewed and spoken to, uh, contextualize their demographic for us. Are these South Bombay, South Delhi, uh, very, you know, sort of affluent societies, English speaking, private school, education, uh, rich parents, uh, access, privilege, or is there like a, you know, a medley of, uh, of, sort of socioeconomic yeah. backgrounds? I, yeah, so I think there is a medley here, actually. There is a mix because, you know, in certain incidents, when you even go into tier two cities, they're, 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 they're very involved. So I, uh, to me, actually, the, whole, the crux of everything is that smartphone. You know, so any, yeah. like I say, anybody who has, has a smartphone has that exposure. Like, you know, to give you a, an example of the, one of the initial reactions that I got on Twitter and, you know, I, I really expected it. So it didn't take me, you know, I, I, I was expecting it. And I, so this guy who wrote to me and said, you know, oh, this is just Western bullshit, quote unquote. And I said, you know, that's precisely the reason why I've written this book, because of people like you who will dismiss everything just because it doesn't conform with our thinking. And, you know, this is that smartphone, in my opinion, anybody who has a smartphone, even in semi-urban India, has that kind of exposure that anybody in that so-called Western world has, you know, you're, you're streaming the same shows, you're gaming the same violent games. So it's all, it's all balancing and evening out to an extent. But yeah, I mean, you know, but certain things that I realized, you know, that, okay, so like, for instance, drugs, drugs is possibly, it's equal in Delhi and Bombay in adult society, if you know, I mean, I'm sorry to make this sweeping statement, but in a way, you know, that's what the children say. But I think when it comes to kids, there's more importance in drugs possibly in the NCR region than it could be in Bombay. But again, when it comes to gadgets, it's possibly more in Bangalore, in Pune. Gaming as well is more in Bangalore. So it, it kind of evens out. I've written it in six chapters, but there's a little bit yeah. of everywhere, even places like Chandigarh, Ludhiana. You know, you have that smartphone, you're going to want to explore. And you are so exploring, I wanna... with, you know.
Yeah, yeah. I want to start by asking you what, uh, so, so Ankit and I get lots of uh, messages from 15 year olds or 16 year olds who have, you know, who are in a relationship, who are talking about heartbreak or who are talking about their first sexual experience. And uh, so what age did you realize that, uh, you know, kids are st- have started getting into relationships or sexual relationships or whatever, whatever a relationship could be at that point of time? What, what age are they starting? So, you know, most of the experts and most of the kids I spoke to, I think, uh, talk about 15, 16 as the age to get it over with. And, you know, so oh it's, uh, <laughs> it's, a di- it's a different take on relationships right now. For girls, it's, uh, you're not cool if you haven't done it, you know. So you want to just get rid of your virginity in a sense, just so that you can be part of the cool gang. If no one wants you, you're not cool anymore. So see how it's changed from our time of, you know, just just going out on a date is, make, you know, used to make us cool in those times. But it's so, so it's changed enormously. But that age of exploration is beginning so much younger. And Ankit is going to hold his head when I give this example. <laughs> I think there are these girls in, uh, in, in Mumbai, in a Mumbai school. And, you know, when uh, they were caught... Uh, you know, having sex with married men. And uh, when uh, they were, uh, you know, called into school by, uh, yeah, uh, you know, uh, uh, they were called in and asked, you know, what's going on really? And their answer was, you know, we prefer having sex with married men because, you know, they know how to handle this. These are 13 They know what to do. They they (laughs) know. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we, and I'm just like, oh my God. God, you know, they look at the way that so there are 13 year olds who, who, you know, who spoke to me about being blackmailed because, you know, they, they so it all also link, is linked to the whole leaking the new thing, right? So that's very, very big. That uh, again, that's how <laughs> they, the dating scene has evolved. And now no one's sending those chickpeas and no one is writing that one letter. And, you know, it's not going through the back alleys. Everyone's just, you know, um, screenshotting a frontal nude and sending it and they think that when you send it on snapchat that uh, you know the person sees it's it disappears disappear, but you're recording it but it's not see what's happening is some you're recording it from another instrument on snapchat and keeping it so even it's it's all very misleading and uh, so that's what's really happening. So then 12 year old, 13 year olds who've done this, who've sent it, then are getting blackmailed into further having sex because, you know, we'll release your nudes. And they're too young to understand how to, you know, how to cope. They're going with the flow of what is expected or what everybody is doing. Or this is the peer pressure to, you know, send in a nude. But, but when you say that they were having uh, sex with married men, but what, what, what led to that? I mean, what are they watching or what are they listening to or what are they reading that it, it is that, that they get this uh, bright idea in their head that they want to have sex with married men? You know, I, I don't know. I think porn addiction is very big in this generation as well. Uh, so very, very big. And uh, I don't think we realize uh, that, you know, there's a time and place for it. Uh, uh, you know, and I think 10 year olds, 11 year olds talking to me about, you know, I'm totally addicted and I'm totally addicted to phone sex. And I'm like, you know, <laughs> I'm looking at my child. <laughs> lock her in, lock her in, right? I mean, these are kids younger than her. And they're talking. And we, we're and a generation, we're a generation. We're a generation who at 38, 39 also must have not had phone sex even <laughs> like four oh, times you can't count it we, on your we fingers. Are, so imagine the parents, imagine these parents who are struggling, you know, I mean, it, I, I keep saying that we really can't be like those ostrich anymore. We really have to pick up the book. I haven't written a parenting book. I for a reason. I cannot give anybody advice. I'm no one to give anybody advice, to be honest, right? But I, I think there's just so much going on that, you know, if, if we don't see what's going on to take, you know, we have to take them to the right path. And if we don't understand what they're saying, they're struggling as well, right? A lot of this uh, having sex at the age of 11, 12, 13 is also peer pressure. 
it's it's actually peer pressure if someone tells you you got to do it you'll do it you know and the thing is that if we're not teaching them about safe sex schools are struggling right a lot of a lot of schools is i mean a lot of children are still telling me that sex ed- education is such an nascent stage so if we're not as families owning up to our children i think we're really going to struggle because the peer pressure is so enormous they re- refuse to snitch on their friends anymore and i think it was always like that but you know what's hampered it is the fact that uh, on social media everything is done to be the popular child in school so you have to be somebody and you have to instantly be somebody it's very instant everything is you know quick validation instant gratification so i think that's just uh, taking them to different places and they're not thinking of the repercussions and if so, no one is telling them it's 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 a minefield out there aspa let's let's talk about the repercussions jotsna because clearly mm-hmm. i mean when adults um speak to you know psychologists or psychotherapists um one of the two problems is a big life issue right it's mostly interpersonal relationships and the friction that's causing when a dulls well in their 30s 40s 50s struggle with the concept of navigating around human emotions and another partner and their emotions i can't even imagine um how ill equipped and inexperienced um you know teenagers can be around this so what is the outcome of this premature access or relationships or the hookup culture uh what outcome are you seeing what scars emotional mental scars psychological scars are you seeing um, happen in teenagers who've been through such experiences massive actually ankit but uh, you know just like you said before i go about the repercussions i want to uh, you know talk about this girl that i was speaking to and i said to her that you know why are you doing this you know nudes are leaked and uh, you know uh you you're slitting your wrists and you're upset but yet your instagram is open and you have these three three accounts and you know strangers are soliciting you and so she she turned around and said you know something similar as you said she said you know I, i'm a teenager how old is this girl how old is this girl this girl 16 16 okay and uh, so she told me she said that you know nudes you know celebrities get their nudes leaked you know older people get their nudes leaked they're in their 40s 50s if they can get it leaked what's the big deal if ours are leaked you know and then they, this generation comes to this word that <laughs> i i i find fascinating trust you know we trust the boys not to leak it okay and i say that you don't you know you guys don't trust anybody you you play in an in anonymous field okay social media is so anonymous you are all playing under anonymous names you know you you portray yourself to be so different than you actually are and yet you are trusting the next upload so there's there's like an irony out there they, so they don't think there's anything wrong in it it's just that you know why do the guy has to have to release it and it's all to and the and then they put it all actually on society that this is our society that society should accept that you know these things are personal and you know everybody does it older people do it so what if we are doing it this is our way of expressing our relationships but the repercussions are enormous so many people going through mental health issues and and the other thing i was stunned with is the casualness of self harm it is so casual that you know but andy we just you know we just lit our wrist because you know it, the intent was not to kill myself you know i was just uh, trying to get it to that point and yet not go beyond the point and i'm like what if you did right or the fact that and and it's it's the so this the other thing that i asked every single you know teen that i spoke with where is this angst coming from you'll have so much angst as a generation that you know everything a, a child is telling me that uh, you know i didn't get into the student council so i overdosed and you know i, I knew my, her parents were doctors so she knew which medicines to take and how much it's fortunate that you know someone was home and she was rushed to the hospital or this child who's you know who was who went for a party where she shouldn't have been and didn't quite like her photo so she stopped going to school and then drank phenyl one early morning it is so rampant slitting your wrist i school principals told me 
you know how rampant it is in schools to just slit your wrists or you know your legs or as this other girl told me i keep pinching my cheeks you know the whole purpose is to get some blood out because that the purpose is to feel the pain and uh, so i mean they're reacting as quickly as you know they're getting into it so not, you know they get into it without possibly thinking or because they don't have a choice you know in a sense as well in the social media world they have to conform they possibly don't have a choice but the repercussions so many of them suffering from mental health you know they don't know where to go they, um, you know counselors i speak to they talk about you know every third person walking in is depressed 15 year olds 14 year olds you know yeah <laughs> okay so i did you manage to ask them about their relationship with their parents uh, because from what it appears they have poured their heart out and they've shared their deepest darkest fears and ambitions with you again trust is at play here with a complete stranger um i mean i'm glad you you know made them feel comfortable to get these details otherwise the book wouldn't have been possible uh, or credible but uh, what's the equation with their family with their siblings uh, do they have a circle of trust within uh, the home or not or are they constantly seeking that outside so you know anki these kids were brilliant you know as an aside they were the most across the board the most amazing children who are capable of delivering just so much that we can never even think about they are so intelligent most of them know where they're going you know and honestly from the bottom of my heart i say i wish them the very best i hope they figure out their space because they're such such amazing children who i'm grateful to the fact that they opened up to me the way they did right and uh, I, i i mean you know if if they harness it well the social media and a lot of them are on the side i mean they 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 kids who are, you know who are writing these brilliant papers on drug awareness even though you know they can't get rid of the weed themselves or you know they're talking about their body shaming publicly because you know they've got a platform so so that you know aunty nobody else feels what we went through so we want you know so they they're making their own tribe out there which is lovely in a sense but like this kid who spoke to me and you know at 13 he started having marijuana and then uh, you know he said that initially it was you know i was introduced to it and then it became an experience enhancer and my question to him was like why experience enhancer even when i go for the movies and i asked him i said why was it not enough to just head to the movies why is it not enough to just watch a movie right and so his answer i think kind of involves the whole lot and he said that you know most of us wouldn't do this if we didn't have a void within us you know and this we're trying to fill a void and i think that's where the families come in uh, you know to understand that why are so many children feeling a void here and they tell me they say that we are as a generation i think they're struggling to explain things at home you know the couple of instagram lives that i did where i had a lot of young uh, young folks on it and they simple they had all of them had one question ankit and that was can you tell us how to communicate with our parents how to have conversations with our families and i think that's where we're going wrong we are not accepting that things are happening to our children and you know there there's and because you know those who are accepting let me tell you they are struggling so imagine those who are not on the ball they are not even at the starting line like there's a lady and she's been fantastic with both her sons she's been you know she's been so involved with her children and uh, so she tells me she said even despite that my son being a topper is into weed you know and she's like you know she's constantly asking me uh, and the son is doing such good stuff you know in college now but he lost a year between weed and then mental health okay i mean they're trying to figure out what came first they're trying to figure out whether they should cope with the mental health first or whether they should cope with that weed and she tells me she said in yet we're a family who sits down and talks so it's not like he's not he he's hiding the weed it's that open everything is open in that house and she said you know their friends come to us and they said that at least you know you talk to our children our parents don't even speak to us and so i tell all these children i said you know 
keep trying to get through to your parents but if you don't and i understand that because as a society we're still more closed than we're open right then go go to your friends go to your friends parents maybe you know that pure level maybe your friends parents can get through to yours but you know so many are struggling this girl who who said you know that she would she would smoke up and she used to smoke up in uh, school but you know then her brother started smoking up but you know she gave up because there was just so much angst between her parents and her brother and her parents would never accept that her brother was going through depression as well as smoking up so there are these stories that are really heartbreaking because i do feel that this generation is is craving for conversations ankit really is and i feel i feel like you know i mean they still come to me there are lots of friends kids who came up to me who are not you know who 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 have not spoken to for the book and these are 20 21 year olds 22 and they're like you know auntie and they've separately messaged me you know they know me through their moms or dads and they they called me up separately and said you have no idea how good it felt that someone has finally spoken about us you know and i think it's really so, really sad yeah like this is so so uh, interesting because ankit and i always like overwhelmed when people write to us and we are like you know they've written to us like these long messages and we are like they don't even know us we are strangers we are not even like a face we are on a podcast so we are just voices for them to trust two strangers on the internet with their deepest darkest uh, secrets means they have no one to talk to in their own Uh, so like yesterday i got a message that uh, that wished me happy mental health day and that child said that uh, you're like a older sister i don't have so when i listen to you on the podcast it is like listening to an older sister and i try to take your advice so thank you for being there for me and i was just like it amazes me that these kids have no one in their own lives be their friends or be their cousins like i remember having an older cousin i always looked up to so if i couldn't talk to my parents i would go and tell she was my cool older cousin and i would go and talk to her so i ha- you know we had those people in our lives when we were growing up but they have nobody so it is and it's 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 also it's also intriguing to me because i think we grew up in much more uh, conservative families our parents didn't uh, talk to us about sex or didn't ask us uh, didn't prepare us for it didn't ask us if they, even if they knew we had a boyfriend girlfriend they ignored it so it was not like it was not something that we talked yeah. about uh so we grew up in those kind and but later like my brother when he had a girlfriend he got her home and when i had a boyfriend who i wanted to get married to i clearly told my parents and they they were fine with it so somewhere do you also feel that this that they don't take their parents seriously enough also i think we took our parents more seriously we were a little scared of them we were a little like okay i don't want to do all this because if mom and dad dad find out it will it will have repercussions we had some sort of um, like this responsibility on us to be good children as well like in everything do you think it's yeah. also because there is no there is no sense of authority in parents i, I mean not in a bad way but something like someone setting no, no. an example someone saying this is good or bad or this is you know wrong or right and nobody's doing that with these kids anymore i think yeah i think it's a combination of a couple of things again you know one thing uh, as i feel like you know and i think i've written about it is that you know these kids who have like thousands of friends on social media and yet are the loneliest generation that we can possibly come across you know because they don't have real friends they don't do face to face communication everything is behind a gadget right and yeah i mean and then the parents of course the parents have given you that gadget but have not taught you how to harness it have not taught have not restrained that freedom have not gotten involved as to how you go around it i think it's a combination of so many things because when you give it so early at 5 6 and i know these instances of i know somebody in bangalore and he is now trying to take it back at the age of 13 and 14 from his child you know and that child is now extremely aggressive uh, somebody's even reported the police against that child you know they were the police at that doorstep and that so taking things back later is just not working with this generation and i always say i said the answer is my kids are not on social media okay it's not like i don't get pressure and it's it's very easy to give in it's very easy to say take that and let me get my space and let me get my downtime you know parenting is so much tougher today it is so much tougher because they don't know any other way 
yeah like, like you said they was we were scared they're not scared they're not scared you know but we have to also draw the line. We have not drawn the line by letting them have so much freedom so early. And now if you're trying taking it back, it just is not going to work because they're used to a certain way of living. They're used to a certain exposure. And I push my, I push it with my kids. I don't give it to them. I mean, she's 12 and she tried it. And let me give you an example. And this just happened two weeks ago. And I'm here in the UAE. So TikTok is still very much uh, you know a thing here and these kids you know and they've got friends here and everybody's on tiktok and every time you know they come back and they're like you know mama tiktok at least let us be on tiktok and i'm just amazed again you know you know play dates are all about tiktok videos okay and i'm like no 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 and finally my husband you know he said okay let's see so he said okay let us open a private account and let's see where that takes you okay and uh, we opened that private account and they did, they're like okay what is the point you know that we were all of two friends we're not doing anything great so one day they come back from this play date uh, from the house where they got this in pressure to open uh, you know this account and very very you know <laughs> quietly they turned around and they were like oh you know mama you can take that tiktok delete it okay and i'm like so why what happened just delete it we don't need it so i let it go later that evening you know i was like so what really happened and uh, as I won't believe it, this is two weeks ago, these kids on a private, luckily my kids were not on it, on a private TikTok account, there was a live suicide streaming. On a private account there, and these are 10-year-old kids who saw it, you know? And then their parents reacted. And I'm like, but you know, why are we waiting for things to happen? So my, my answer, I think, in all this is to keep pushing it. I have a friend who's got a 15-year-old son, almost 16, and she hasn't given him a phone. And I, and I quote it to everybody. And I say, you know, she says that, and, and she's gone through the stage of, I'm a bad mama, I've, you know, he hates me, to, to the stage where he's now turned around and said that, I actually thank you because, you know, I've become such a brilliant guitar player. And if it was, I, you know, I have nothing else. I am so focused. And she said, every parent comes up to me and, you know, no one says that I'm doing a bad thing. They just turn around and say, how did you manage it? And I think that's the trick. You have to, you know, we have to be more of the parents in a sense of old than we are of the new. I know, I know. But that I think, brings me I to think... another question, which is actually about... Uh... Sorry, Asa, can I? Yeah. Ha, ha, say. Yeah. So that, that actually brings me to the point of, uh, we've, we've spoken a lot about um, the symptoms, you know, ki ye ye ho raha hai aur ye galat ho raha hai. And I think just step one of accepting and acknowledging ki bohat kuch galat ho raha hai, ek puri ki puri generation almost um, waste ho sakti hai, agar intervention sahi tarike se sahi wakt pe na ho to, um, so let's let's talk a little bit about uh, what can be done because uh, I am an eternal optimist and I'd like to believe for the sake of that uh, you know eternal optimism that something can be done uh, that you know teenagers aren't the lost cause through the length and breadth of this amazing country. So uh, what have been the cries of help coming from? Um, the children themselves, the tweens, the teenagers, what have you heard from them? And uh, in your own lived experience as a parent, as a mother to two daughters, uh, I can't imagine how difficult that must be. So hats off to you. Um, what, according to you, is a blend over there, you know, from what you're hearing from uh, the kids and from what you think uh, can be a likely approach? See, firstly, I don't think we can be... Uh... Uh, that closed as our parents used to be. So I, I have a very open home, Angit. Everything under the sun is discussed in my house. So the, you know, the attempt is then to demystify everything and take it away. And I strongly, I strongly believe in it. I, to give you an example, you know, a, a whipping incident happened in my elder one's class, I think when she was just in class five or six. Okay, and she came and told me and she said, Mama, three boys were found whipping. And uh, so, but there was nothing like, oh my God, what is vaping? Oh my God, you know, I, it's not like she's trying to slightly get on the iPad and figure out what is vaping. She knew, knew what is vaping. So I normalized the existence of things in my house. I normalized the fact that things happen along with the fact that we don't have to get involved with it, right? So when you normalize that things happen and yet normalize behavior, 
you are you know in a way just let just helping them out in the world that you know things happen that drugs happen the way you're happen. taking the stigma out of it or the curiosity uh, out of it absolutely that curiosity is a big thing so my kid my kids are not you know even when i was writing the book everything was open in the house you know and my my younger one she's eight so she doesn't take in everything but it's not like we we haven't hidden anything from her because i think conversations need to start really early now that birds and bees that we think at 13 14 i think it's like 6 7 you know so i I've, Take everything out. We we have kept it such an open house that please come and speak to us. Open up, and I think that is the one way that we are different from how our parents' generation was. We we you know we like us also said they didn't speak to us. It wasn't the done thing, and you know th- th- those were different times anyway. Also, I'm because supposed- anatomy anatomy is changing earlier, right? Girls are beginning to menstruate at the age of nine and ten, mm-hmm. which used to be fourteen, fifteen when we were growing up. Absolutely. I mean, you know, it, it this conversation had to happen because, you know, like it. I think it happened in my daughter's class nine as well. You know, I think was it eight? No, I as in the nine year old. Uh, was it eight year old or a nine year old? So I mean, you know, then they come and then they're they're like, oh my god! And I think even that took us a bit by surprise. But I, so I think they're now really equipped because a lot of conversations are happening amongst the children themselves. So if we are not teaching them the right things, you know, there, there's that scope to go the other way, and it's very easy also because everything is out there. Yeah, tap. So if you tap X, you're likely to get S E X as the first thing coming up, right? It's how it is on Google. So. I think this a that you know normalize take away that stigma tell talk to your child about the fact that things happen and then you know take it forward I also strongly believe push that gadget back as much as you can because a child who is 16 can hand harness is so much better than a child at 12 even 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 6 months uncle it makes all the difference in my opinion you know 12 and a 12 year and a half year old will be able to handle it There's a generation also getting very aggressive, so that's not something I've mentioned. You know, very though, though that's another repercussion of having to conform, having to you know be one with the peers, having to be the Mister or the Miss Popular. You're getting very aggressive, and uh, I think that is something as well that a lot of parents are coping with. You know, because you've given again, like I said, you've given that phone at eleven. You're trying to take it back at thirteen. Your child is not giving it. and i i've spoken about these incidents where you know uh, a mother has got you know her child at 12 or 13 is saying can you please charge the phone and she refused to charge it she, it's not like she forgot it she didn't want to charge it because she didn't want her child to be on it and that child took it and flung it on the mother you know that there there's just so much aggression and i'm telling you about this person that i personally know struggling with his 13 year old son in bangalore struggling i mean he's had the cops at his gate it's that bad you know and this is again the same thing he's now trying to take that ipad away but it's it's a bit too late so my thing is that you know involve your children in things talk to them you know show them another world and i think you know like this 15 year old he's discovered the love for guitar he doesn't even want to phone anymore i mean i might see this trend somewhere you know i see it like i i i follow a lot of these uh, cyber experts and stuff uh, worldwide globally and you know i see this trend especially like in ireland and a few other countries where there's like a reverse trend happening and everyone's talking about giving that nokia phone back to their children so as i say you want to give a phone you want to track your child yes you don't need to put a safari in it why do you you want to just call give them a phone without a safari right and i think the proof of the pudding is in the fact and i've been a science and tech journalist for 15 years just now so i know this first hand um steve jobs mark zuckerberg or all all the big people in big tech nobody gives access to social media or their own devices to their own <laughs> children you probably see that later i've written that that's one portion of where i've ended a chapter saying none of them at the most they had a desktop in the kitchen and it's really funny because i i so i wrote this book you know outside gymnastics classes and badminton courts okay before covid my kids play uh, i i you know encouraged a lot of sports in my house i used to play myself I, you know my husband and i were both state level so we really encouraged our kids to get out there and you know we 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 believe strongly in that so i was sitting outside gymnastics class one day and you know this american guy he came and he was uh, uh, you know he's his 
kid was inside and he's slightly older though. And then he, we started talking about gadgets and he works <laughs> in uh, Silicon Valley. And uh, so he took out this old Kataras type phone. Okay, one old, it's, it's not something I've ever seen. He said, this is my phone. And this is the phone my kids are going to get because none of us out there give our kids any gadget. None of us. And I've seen this, you know, I, 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 I think for Indians, it's a, it's a new toy. And I, I think as parents, we have not learned how to... No, in India, it's a matter of prestige. I mean, you have to show society and the parents that I have brought for my children. How do you get FOMO? I think I think what you said about the boy who started uh, guitaring and now doesn't want a phone is also, there is a point in life when you want something. If you don't get it in that time, you sort of like get over it. Like, like everybody asked me, how did you, how did you not smoke? You're a journalist, you don't smoke. And I was like, you know, in college when everybody was started smoking, I missed, I missed that boat. I, once you miss that boat, you just miss it. You yeah. never smoke. You don't, you don't yeah. end up smoking because you miss that boat at that point of time, you know, so it keeps you out of it later. So, uh, yes. but, uh, but yeah. yeah. But we want to we want to uh, we want to end the show by asking you like I mean obviously uh, you know some things parents can do like what you're doing and uh, with your kids but kids are going to get into relationships kids are yes. going to be attracted to the opposite sex it is going to happen and uh, they are going to experiment and all those things and we cannot stop what they're doing when they're not in the house or wherever they are at parties so if if and there are a lot of young people who listen to our podcast so what would you tell 13, 14, 15, you know, till 19, whatever age they are, what would you tell them about their first experience? I mean, how would you think that it could be a safer, more consensual, uh, you know, a consensual experience, something that would be nice for them? What, I mean, what is, uh, what are some of the, you know, stories that you have heard and how you can say that it can be a better experience? Asa, I really, really emphasize on uh, consent. I do. I think that we don't speak enough about this as a society uh, in our schools. And I'm hoping that, you know, schools, especially after COVID and everybody now on, you know, on their gadgets, I think the schools firstly need to change. They really need to go beyond textbook teaching to embrace a whole, a very holistic kind of teaching. These children come to us, come to schools with very, very different issues. You know, it's, it's gone beyond Hindi, maths, English, you know, it's, it's, it's life lessons that they're craving to learn. And so I think consent and children, girls need to know that, you know, they can say no even halfway through, right? It's not because we've said yes, that we, we have to carry on with it. They change their mind, they change their mind. It is their mind, right? And I think similarly for boys, boys have to, I think like it, it's fantastic. Like, you know, my pediatrician and he, he I, and I've quoted him in the book and he's spoken about the fact that how for, you know, now in the last couple of decades, we're talking about how girls are changing and how girls are evolving and, so we've forgotten to speak about how our boys need to change as well. And I think, you know, and I see a lot of that, that, you know, mothers, I, I find that, to be honest, <laughs> to be a bit of a token reaction that, you know, we need to teach our boys respect. I think it's gone beyond that. And I think our children need to, I, it all comes from what's going on at home. It's, it really stems from the fact that, you know, they, they need to have conversations. They need to speak. They need to not go in with the peer pressure. I know it's very, very hard, but I think as first experiences of anything, they have to be comfortable in their selves, you know, to go ahead. And the one thing that I've not mentioned here, which I found to be, which, which actually uh, Asta and Ankit is something I want to just mention very briefly, because uh, this is the thing that really took me aback is my chapter six gaming. And uh, I spoke, uh, you know, I, I wrote it last thinking that, you know, this is going to be the lamest of them all. And, you know, when we finished it between both my editor and me, we were like, we were shocked at the kind of information I had simply because I think we don't take gaming seriously. I think a lot of children have spoken to me about this, you know, the fact that, you know, pop-up chats happen. So 
uh, there's a lot of grooming, there's a lot of predators out there. And I think, so I tell children, you know, learn a little bit about your safety, whether it comes to sex, whether it comes to social media. Safety is really something that they need to learn before they put their steps in because it's very, very easy to get trapped, whether it is the strangers on social media, whether it is people who are, you know, of those hundred in a multiplayer game, 40 of them are possibly not who they seem to be. So I think if, if they are on the ball and I think if, you know, as, as people, if you can push back and, you know, push back on social media as children as much as you can, that's a big word. I know we're all stuck and I think it's taken me back as well. COVID has pushed me back myself, you know, with the, with the online and, you know, how strict I am. But I think there's a world out there and, you know, I think just, just, go with that flow. I mean, social media is not, I mean, if, you're, if you think you're going to miss out on Instagram today, so be it. There's going to be another app by the time you're 16, you're 15, you know, every, the, the apps are coming out by the day, right? But uh, your safety, I think is really important. And I think, you know, try and speak with whoever you can speak with. This, this is my advice to parents, just uh, to children, just try and get through to the parents, to your parents, if nothing else, show them my book. Uh, because, you know, I've tried to show a mirror, honestly, to pay, my demographic has been actually from 15 to 45 to 50, actually. It's not a parenting book, but I've tried to show a mirror so that for every one of us, I've tried to do justice to the children because they say that, and I understand, they say that, you know, we're not the same as you all. You know, we don't want to conform to a society that you all conform to so easily. We don't want to give in to that peer pressure, but now what, so, I mean, 100% cut off for three subjects yesterday. Where are these children going to go? I mean, as a society, we really need to introspect as to what so many of these children are don't, possibly don't have the ability to score, but we will not see that they don't have the ability. We will make them sit and mug. And I think sadly, a society has a lot to introspect. I think it, it really is on our society that we, we don't want to talk about mental health. We don't want to talk about safe sex. We don't want to talk about so many things, but I think that, you know, we don't have a choice anymore. We really don't. It is time for a reckoning in society and more so, especially among parents. Um, cannot, cannot, cannot thank you enough, Jotsna, for taking out such valuable time on a Sunday, all the way from UAE, especially. Where are you? Dubai? Qatar? No, yeah. the, the other, Abu Dhabi. Other Abu Dhabi. <laughs> okay, in Abu Dhabi. That's great. I hope you and your family and everyone you know is uh, staying safe, staying healthy, staying sane, uh, given the special circumstances. And uh, I, I would actually request you to consider two things. One, um, to have a more sustained and organized and periodic conversation about this, you should totally have a podcast of your own uh, yeah, or a YouTube yeah, channel you of your own. Yeah, it is, and it is, uh, uh, and <laughs> you should totally write a sequel or sequels to this particular book. Um, and, you know, take, take deeper looks at maybe smaller sections uh, because within one, one year, it's a whole different generation, yes. right? From a nine-year-old to a 10-year-old to 12-year-old. Um, so uh, all the more power to it you, is. all the more... Uh, you know, good luck to you. I think it, I think things keep changing as well. Like Ankit and I, when we first started the podcast, we were like, how long will we keep having these con conversations? But we are now like three seasons and we have done like almost 80 episodes and we have something to talk about Wait. every episode because people write to us, things keep changing and evolving and new things keep happening. And we're just like, oh my God, like this never ends. Like talking about love Archkel is, also, like talking about life, Ajkal. So we just like, it's Dude. like never ending. Never ending. No, amazing, amazing. You guys are doing such great stuff. I, I had a look at some of your episodes. Amazing stuff, guys. Really. So Thank I'm, you. I'm really Thank grateful. You. Oh, had me on your show. I've enjoyed it. I can speak and speak, as you can see, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so can we. So can we. We have to stop ourselves. So can we. So we have to send messages to each other. Okay, we have to end this now. Because it's just like... <laughs> We have to, we, we can speak as well, but this will be out soon and we'll send it to you we'll, and uh, we'll share it. And uh, if, uh, if anyone wants to get in touch with you on Instagram, how can they do so? Yeah, it's, uh, uh, it's an open thing, Jyotsna Mohan, I think it is, yeah, um, with an underscore or something at the end. But uh, I will send you my things. Um, you, yeah, um, it's, it's open. You'll find we'll it. tag you. And we'll tag you when we put it up as well. So, uh, yeah, so we'll know that. I like the mother 
I'm the one who's giving everyone gyan that you know, as parents, we need to up our <laughs> tech game. I'm one of those. <laughs> okay, let's I mean, let's take a quick screenshot here. Let's do a quick screenshot of Zoom. Okay. Uh, we'll put this up on social media. And three, two, one. Perfect. Thanks so much, Josna. Have a great day. Really appreciate you taking on the time. Thank you, you for too, coming. Guys. Thank you. Thank you. And guys, if you wanna if you wanna reach out to us, uh, you can uh, always. Uh, message us on love archipel podcast on instagram ankit is has changed his name from gadgetwala to ankit dot today so stop us asking him about which phone to buy and start asking him <laughs> love questions in after this to my advice is going to be please phone mat kharido please social phone media pe mat aao sab bhag jao yahan se sab khata hai chalo <laughs> we'll see you next time hope you like it thanks so much everyone take care of yourself bye 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 bye